Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, we're doing a deeper cut here, uh, taking a look at the webhooks feature, which is part of your Plex Pass subscription. And this one is a little more complicated to take advantage of versus some of the other features that we typically look at here on the channel. But once you got it figured out, it can actually do some cool stuff. So check this out. I've got a movie playing here on my computer, and when I click the play button, my light will go out. Isn't that cool? And then if I hit the pause button here, my light will go back on. Now I've spent the better part of two days trying to make this actually work, but I've got it down to, I think, a pretty good workflow here. So what we're gonna do in this video is take a look and see how I made that happen. And hopefully in the course of this video, you'll get some ideas as to how you can integrate webhooks into what you are doing. Again, this is not a plug and play kind of scenario here. There is a lot to it. But once you figure it out, it starts to make a lot more sense. And we're going to dive into it in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and explore webhooks on your Plex Pass subscription. Now, to start things off, I definitely suggest you take a look at the support document that I will put down below in the video description. Basically, what webhooks do is that when certain events happen on your Plex server, they will fire off a little bit of data to a URL that you specify in your account configuration. And some of those events that it will fire off on are when you add new content to your library, when you pause or play media like we were doing at the beginning of the video here, along with a few other things that can trigger off one of these webhooks. And what you do on the other side of this is set up an application that can listen for these webhooks when your Plex server transmits out the data. There's a lot of stuff that can listen to a webhook, including services like IFTTT and Zapier. What I'm going to show you today is something called Homebridge that I covered in another video recently. And what Homebridge lets you do is connect devices that are not normally compatible with Apple to Apple's HomeKit. So for example, I've got a ton of wise plugs and light bulbs that I could not use with my Apple devices unless I was in the wise app. But because now I have Homebridge running on my Synology NAS, I can now use those devices like other HomeKit devices and integrate them into my automations. And one of the cool things about Homebridge is that it also supports webhooks. And there's actually a plugin for Plex webhooks that you can install in Homebridge. And that will have your Homebridge installation start looking for events that you're firing off on your Plex server. So let's take a look and see how I have that plugin configured inside of Homebridge. I'm going to click on settings here. You're going to give it a name. You can call it whatever you want. And then you can add multiple sensors under this name. And what a sensor is, is basically a set of criteria that the plugin will look for in order to fire off an automation. And what this translates to is that the plugin for every one of these sensors that we add will create inside of HomeKit a virtual sensor that is either on or off. It's using an occupancy sensor to uh, replicate this functionality. So for example, earlier, when I hit the play button, it'll report the occupancy sensor as detecting somebody in the room. So when that sensor reports occupancy, it turns the light off. When I hit the pause button or stop the media, the plugin will make that occupancy sensor report that there is nobody in the room. And then the automation that I set up in HomeKit will turn the light back on. So it's kind of a hack, but it works. And that is how this executes. But you might be thinking, well, I've got multiple Plex players in the house and I want them to turn on different lights. So what you can do here is add another sensor. So what we could say here is maybe upstairs player. I'll call it Plex player. And if we go over here to filter criteria, what I could do is set a different uh, filter to look for to turn that on or off. So for example, if I have player title equal Apple TV, for example, if the webhook it's getting doesn't say that the player is an Apple TV, it won't execute the sensor. So that is how you can set it to look for specific players or behave differently. And what it will do is create a different virtual sensor 
for every one of these things that you create inside of the plugin settings here. Now, what I also had to do was set up a listening port so Plex has a place to send the data to when it fires off those webhooks. And what you do is go over here to webhook server and then give it a port number. I went with the default here, which is 32401. And I also typed in the local IP address of my network attached storage device. And once I did that, I clicked on save. And what you should do at that point is restart your home bridge here to get everything up and running. When it comes back up, one thing you have to do initially when you set up the server is go over here to the gear and click on bridge settings. And what this will do is give you a barcode that you can scan with your phone to add that virtual set of sensors to the HomeKit application. And once you do that, your sensor will be available. Let me show you now the settings in Plex that we have to adjust to send that data over to HomeBridge. And on the Plex web interface, I went over here to settings and under the account screen here, you'll find the option for webhooks. And in here, I typed in the local IP address of my NAS along with that port number that we created. Now, depending on what you're using, this URL will be different. So if you're sending it to Zapier, for example, Zapier is going to provide you with a destination URL that you will put in here. What's cool is that you can send webhooks to more than one place. So I could easily add another one if I wanted to and have some other automations fire off. So there's a lot of potential to what you can do here. Let's take a look now at what happens every time one of these events fires off. Now, one thing I would suggest you do is enable verbose logging in the plugin settings here. This way, when these webhooks start firing off, you'll have a good sense as to what is happening and how the plugin is interpreting everything. Now, as a reminder, we have two virtual sensors that we configured here. Uh, one is the one that I started with. And just to show you how this one is set up, this sensor will fire off when the plugin detects the player is an iPhone. The other sensor here will fire off when the player is detected as an Apple TV. And this way you can have different lights turn on and off depending on which virtual sensor gets tripped. So for example, right now, we are playing back here on my iPhone. If I hit the pause button, that will turn the light on because the plugin uh, was looking for this particular event to fire off. But again, if we were on the Apple TV, the other virtual sensor would activate. Now, if I close this and go over to status, you can see that a whole bunch of data came down from the Plex server. And I'll show you what that data looks like in a second. But as you can see here, you've got a lot of stuff in addition to just the event firing off. But what's important to look for here is how it is interpreting the filter that you set up. So as you can see here, filter group one, which is the first sensor that we set up, looks for an iPhone, and because it found the iPhone, that will trigger the sensor. But the second filter that it tested against did not find Apple TV, so that sensor did not fire off. If you're curious as to what's in one of these packets, you can pause the video and take a look here. There is a lot, including metadata, links to thumbnails. If you're really savvy at working with webhooks here, there's a lot of data to work with. And this stuff comes down every time one of these events gets triggered. Now, this plugin is really simple. You can't do much with it beyond have it look for play and pause events. But for what I was putting together here for this video, that's fine. But I did add something to the mix that added some cool functionality. Let's take a look at that. Now, in our prior Plex video, we looked at their end credit detection feature. And one of the cool things about how this webhooks thing works is that when credits are detected, or you reach 90% of the video, it will send over what's called a Scrabble event. And as you can see here, even though the movie is playing, because we got to the end of it, it sent an event that I was able to trigger the light to come back on with. And this was not something that was built into the plugin by default, but I found a very simple code change got it to work. So let me show you what I did to fix it. Now, as I mentioned at the outset, this plugin is really simple. The only events it responds to are play and pause events, and they define the events that it looks for in their constants.js file. And you can see the play events will react to media play and media resume, 
and the pause events will react to pause and stop. Now what I found is that if you edit this constants.js file, which will be in your Homebridge directory under node modules, and then you jump into the Homebridge Plex webhooks folder, you'll find it in lib. And if you go in here and just add media.scrabble to the pause events, it will react to the scrabble event that comes over on the webhook. And yes, this is crazy complicated, but I got it to work and I was really proud of myself and that's why I wanted to make this video for you. So I've got it set up now to a point where when I'm upstairs and the media is paused, I don't have to go turn my light on to go to the bathroom. I can have the light come on automatically and turn off automatically when I hit the play button. And then of course the lights will come back on when the end credits roll. All good stuff here. Again, this is just the tip of the iceberg on webhooks. As you can see, it's not something very easily implemented, but I found this to be one of the simpler ways to do it. Now, before we close out, I did want to acknowledge an open source third-party utility called Tartuli that I know a lot of you in the community are using. And one of the features of Tartuli are its notification agents, which will do things similar to what we just saw with webhooks. But again, you need to have this software package running in addition to all of your automation. And what it can do is look for events on the Plex server and then send a trigger off to any one of the services that you see listed here. And there are a few things that Tautuli can look for that Webhooks doesn't look for. So you can see all the different events that will trigger a notification inside of Tautuli. So for example, it could send you a notification when your Plex server goes down so you know to go and take care of it. So this might be something to look at. We're not going to have time to cover this today, but this might be the subject of a future video because there's a lot of functionality that this software package provides that you might want to take a look at if this webhooks thing looks like a little too much for you at the moment. But I am very pleased with what I was able to put together here. It solves a problem I was looking to solve, and hopefully this helps you if you're trying to set it up yourself. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.